Hi, this is Jason McCarthy at Wickham Wanderers and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. Seven days on from transfer deadline day. This time last, last week we were thinking, will there be, won't there be? We didn't know. Um, there, there was. There two. was. <laughs> but after the show, we didn't know. Throughout the whole show we didn't know. We had a feeling, but we didn't know. We, I did. Yeah, you did. I did. Uh, Luke is with us as well. You were actually at the training ground. It was very interesting to be behind the scenes on a transfer deadline day. And we'll find out more about that this hour as well with, um, well, you. Uh, <laughs> also, we'll hear from Phil in a few moments' time as well, uh, bringing us our uh, match briefing. Also, we'll hear from the manager, uh, among other things, uh, paying tribute and sharing the club's condolences to Adam Ankers, who I'm sure you've heard has uh, uh, sadly passed away uh, this week as well, uh, a member of the uh, Wickham Wanderers Foundation's team and also a uh, season ticket holder at Adams Park as well. And all our thoughts, obviously, with uh, Adam and his family as well. And uh, we'll tell you a little bit more uh, about some plans uh, for uh, him uh, coming up very soon as well. Plus, uh, we'll preview the visit of Peterborough this coming Saturday. Uh, we'll hear from manager uh, Matt Bloomfield again talking about that. It's, the same, it's in the same bit, to be honest. I've kind of... <laughs> Kind of done that as separate things, but no. Also included in our uh, chat with the man- manager uh, on what is today uh, his 40th birthday. Very happy birthday. Happy uh, birthday. He won't be listening to this, though. 40 years old. I know. Doesn't look it, does he? What a landmark. No. Do you uh, think it's going to be a bit like, you know, when presidents or prime ministers, and you look at them beforehand and afterwards, and they've, like, aged? <laughs> Quite possibly, mm. yes. He does mention grey hairs, actually. Mm. So that... <laughs> I, think, that I think being the manager of a... Of a uh, well, any club, probably, but would, would bring that on anyway. Very true. Also, as mentioned, Peterborough United coming to Adams Park this Saturday, thanks to the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association. Uh, we'll speak to a former striker. I say former, as he's uh, not long ago retired from football. And uh, he played for both clubs. Did rather well as well. Uh, Craig McHale smith will hear from him. Uh, another Craig will be on as well from Wickham Wanderers Women. Giving little, us a round. Craig. He's only small. Is, he's he, is he that small? I'll, I'll explain later. OK. Uh, and uh, so he'll be giving us a round-up of uh, uh, the women who are also in a uh, cup competition and doing very, very well in that as well. Uh, that and more, if we can fit it in, including details of that Bradford game in the semi-final of the... Uh, Bristol Street Motors Trophy. Almost forgot the name of it for a second. Uh, but <laughs> I was going to go Papa John's. It's had so many. It's not called that anymore. Um, but first, uh, let's catch up with Phil on uh, what's been an interesting time. We had that one win in 17 uh, League One games, of course, which which felt like a bit like a winter. Uh, but now, uh, moving into spring. Yes, green shoots, as they say, don't they? Just popping up. Um, yeah, you know, lots to lots to look forward to. Hopefully, um, uh, you know, the cup semi final in a few weeks, and we've got a staggering amount of games this month. Uh, and indeed, between now and the end of the season, to get it all done by the end of April, um, and you know, that win against Cheltenham and, and the win in the semi final against Brighton under twenty ones. Um, hopefully it could be the platform or the springboard, if you will, to kind of kick us on into a decent run again and move us up the table. Uh, no one wants to be sort of looking over their shoulders uh, as the months roll on uh, through spring. Uh, hopefully we can um, propel ourselves up the table, um, you know, and if we can have a really good week next week and, and that can hopefully give a bit of a cushion so we can really enjoy that cup semi-final. Um, you know, these these are moments that don't come around too often and it's a big opportunity to get to Wembley. Um, but first and foremost, the, the league form is, is super important as well. There seem to have been so many encouraging things to come from both those games, really, to, that, that should help really as a, as a great sort of base to build on going forward for this part of the season now. Yeah, I think that Cheltenham game was huge for, for many reasons, um, you know, just in isolation and Wickham's form and, and to get the win on the board. But also Cheltenham were a team who have um, started the season appallingly um, since the manager came in, Daryl Clark. Their form has been sort of that of a mid-table side, really. Um, he's done a fantastic job there and it's put a bit of a, a buffer between the two clubs. Um, we play them again at the end of the month as well. So I think there's quite a lot riding on those two games. Um, so to win the first one um, was excellent. More than one goal up going into stoppage time, um, what was recent late goals going against us was was nice as well um and in you know we talk about the word being clinical there's no more better example than a clinical finish than Gareth McCleary's uh, uh, second goal for Wickham on on Saturday at Cheltenham uh, again Potsy as well from the from the penalty save as well um and it's that cutting edge that's maybe been costing Wickham a bit um in these fine margins going against us uh, in the last sort of couple of months so hopefully we could be looking forward to uh, to to more of that and more points on the board um, and, you know, let's see where we are at the end of the month. I mean, to see GMAC's goal especially because you, you really got a thought of, you know, oh yes, that's that's what he does and, and it'd be great to sort of see more of that. 
Absolutely. Yeah, you know, the the, the class between um, Voxy and, and GMAC in, in the build-up to that goal, I mean, it was absolutely rapid. I mean, let's not forget, you know, that GMAC isn't in his 20s as, as, you know, you'd be mistaken, you know, a lot of people would be mistaken for thinking he is. Um, certainly with the pace, you know, this is a, 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 pro, a top pro who really looks after himself in the gym uh, with his, with what he what he eats. And he, he's a fantastic example for everybody. Um, and, you know, to see him uh, outpace a much younger defence and then there's still a lot to do from the finish as well. It was a, a class finish. But also the layoff from Vokes, he was top notch as well. So to see that from a Wicked perspective on Saturday w- was a huge boost. Um, and hopefully, yeah, as you say, we can see a bit more of that, uh, hopefully starting on Saturday against Peterborough. I mean, Peter was really set up for it for a great game, isn't it? Because I think it's always nice when the top teams come to town, especially. But you know, as I say, they're in good form. You know, only lost. You know, compared to recently, obviously, uh, and and they're they're a man down. Uh, but also, you know, they're such a young side, aren't they? And you know, Darren Ferguson obviously in his fourth spell there now as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I wasn't alone. I'm sure lots of Wicked fans were joining me in in sort of punching the air when I saw they went down to 10 men on a, on a wet pitch uh, a long way from home and to then surrender the lead and end up ultimately losing the game uh, and then having to sit on the coach all the way back to Peterborough afterwards on a Tuesday night whilst Wickham were preparing the training ground and not having a game. Of course, you know, Wickham had the reverse of that, you know, last week going into Cheltenham having a Wednesday night fixture and, and uh, whereas Cheltenham didn't have a midweek game and Wickham made it count. Um, so it, you know, these things can go against, and you know we just have to make sure that that we're on on the on the page. Peterborough have had two consecutive defeats, and they're going to be looking to to stop that run. You know, they're at the right end of the table, so they have a different form of pressure. But you know, we all know that it's momentum. Teams have sticky patches during seasons, and it looks like Peterborough are on one at the moment. And we hope it continues on Saturday as well. You know, their fans are, are demanding. They they want to get them in the championship. That will add pressure as well. So, like every every week we say on, on Wanderers TV on the commentary, first goal and the start of the game will be absolutely vital. If Wickham can get ahead, then um, I fully expect the, the Peterborough fans to put pressure on their own side. And, and we'd love to hear that, wouldn't we? Absolutely. And it'll be great for, for fans to see perhaps some of the, the new arrivals as well. Yeah, yeah, a chance for, for, you know, first chance to see some of those new faces at Adams Park. Um, I thought, you know, Matt Butcher on Saturday was excellent in the middle there. He kind of gave us a real good indication of what we can expect from him. Uh, the cameo from from uh, Beverly Labala, you know, we, we saw what he was about when he was playing for Burton. Not just the goal, but just the work rate. He's a real pest. Um, so to see him in the quarters was great on Saturday. And it was a good start from him too. Um, so yeah, so yeah, there's there's some good headaches for the manager now. There's there's a bit more depth in squad and 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 fitness availability, etc. So um, some tough choices to make, but they're, they're good choices, aren't they? Absolutely, and hopefully a great atmosphere as well. I mean, we, we've we've talked over the weeks and we about the the fan discontent, and there's been sort of booing, and it just feels like not not as much perhaps support if that's the right word. But it'd be fantastic for for the, for the supporters to get behind you know the manager and you know and the players, obviously. Look, wins wins is is the best medicine in football. You know, we all know that. So a couple of wins last week, one in the cup, one in the league. Like I said earlier on, that's a good platform. If we can continue to build on that, then yes, I think the atmosphere will, will turn too and the fans will come on board with that. Look, Peterborough at any point of the season is always a tasty fixture. We've had some good fun with them down the year, haven't we? Um, and no doubt this will be another chapter in that. Um, so look, you know, this, this is a great opportunity. Like I said, Peterborough at the right end of the table, it's a great opportunity to, to get in their way again on Saturday. And look, we need the points too. And, you know, it would be wonderful to go into that cup semi-final with a real skip in our steps after having some good results in the league. And then, like I said, so we can enjoy that trip to Bradford. And I think as well, you feel especially pleased for the manager, don't you? Especially after, you know, seeing that, that chat you did with him, him, him and Pete on deadline day and just to know that he's got that backing and obviously that he is a young manager and, you know, that he's working so hard to, to achieve great things. Absolutely. And you've only got to say one o'clock back. It's quite a long way to wind it back because Gareth was here for so long. But... You know, he had a tough start in managerial. You know, a lot of managers do, and you know there was there was discontent for Gareth Ainsworth at times during his his, his spell with us, especially at the start. And it, and then you know it's really refreshing to hear the Gwig saying, you know, they're they're in it together, they stand with them, um, everyone's working together. Um, and you know it was it was good to see that um, last week, and it's been well received by the fans as well. And yeah, you know, it's all about results. So it's now about converting those into results. And, you know, I can say there's no one working harder in football than Matt Bloomfield and, and Pete Kuig and, and Rob Kuig. They know what they need to do. 
Um, and, you know, we've got 11 weeks now to see where it takes us. Real pleasure to speak to you. Enjoy the game on Saturday. Cheers, Colin. Will be a very interesting uh, 11 weeks, and you can hear Phil describing the game against Peterborough on Saturday. You also may have heard him uh, doing Ring in the Blues either live on the radio or indeed on the podcast. You might have caught up uh, at a later date. Uh, the uh, former Wickham Wanderers employee and current uh, German comedy ambassador Henning Vane was on, and also uh, Luke Leahy. We were ruthless, you know, attacking sort of wise with the boys up, up the top of the field, and we were ruthless in our defending as well. So that cushion was nice, and, um, you know, even if. You know, they chucked everything at us and we sort of dealt with it. You know, we were, every ball was into our box and, you know, Jack and Joe, it's been well covered the last few days of how well they, they, they did on Saturday. And, um, and yeah, it was a massive, massive sort of shift from everyone. And, and Jack's obviously been working on that goal in training for weeks, right? <laughs> yeah, he has, to be fair. We worked on that quite a lot, putting it in that area of, of his leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great finish. Um, yeah, obviously the defensive... Um, partnership has been well documented I think EFL team of the week league one team of the week yeah um, I think what's gone under the radar a bit is just how good Gareth McCleary's goal was yeah I know yeah from it, it was quite a weird goal because it was downhill as well I know that doesn't probably mean a lot to the view but it was a massive hill on sat hill on Saturday and uh, the ball just sort of fell to him and, and all very sad to do with I know it sounds easy that it looked but just touch around the corner because G's pace is still frightening at, at the age he is so to do that and then to get composure and, and, and finish it off and it was a it was sort of a relief then when that goal went in because we then we had the two the two goal cushion going into to half time and um it's a position that you know we haven't really found ourselves in a lot this season, you know, with a two goal cushion. So um it was nice and it was sort of a you know a real away performance that, that, that we deserved. We've got to talk about the penalties because G Mac was on the penalties on Saturday yeah. because you had your one saved in in the game before. Yeah. Um, but Freddie Potts, full credit, because he was Absolutely. quickest to react by some margin. Yeah, where was he last week when I missed my penalty? <laughs> that was my, my argument. Um, yeah, no, brilliant from Fred. You know, that's, a, that's a, this is the thing with penalties. It's such a, a lottery, you know. Sometimes it's a great save, sometimes it's a bad penalty, but it's it's having the, you know, the bottle to, to go up and, and, and help the team and, and try and score the penalty. So, um, you know, no... Nothing against G. I've I've missed two now this season, and you know it's a pressure it's a pressure moment that you know we all want to be involved in. And fair fair play to Freddie, you know, because that third goal was was massive considering how the second half went. I'm interested in the terminology here because both your penalties were on target. The keeper had to save them, but you're calling them misses. Yeah, to, to me they are. Um, yeah, it's just a it works so hard to to score a penalty. I take so many in training, and then. For them to miss or for the t- keeper to save it, it's like, well, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, all, all three penalties are on target, so there's just some some good saves that you know the keeper's got got to make. And um, but listen, I think if we get another penalty, then you know it's all for grabs now. Great to hear from Luke <laughs> on the Ring of the Blues on Tuesday, and you can get the, uh, more on that from wherever you get your podcast from on the Ring of the Blues. Cele- celebration that podcast. Oh, I see. Mm. I thought we were at some slot machines. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, really great to have that insight because there's a, there's a brilliant uh, Ask Luke feature as well where he gives brilliant insight as to you know, what the players do when they're not playing and what it's like to travel and stuff like that. And also he spoke there uh, really well about you know, Gareth McCleary's pace and, and you've had experience of that in the training ground yourself. Uh, yeah, last week, Friday, so it had been yesterday, uh, tomorrow, last week, uh, they were out training, getting some filming of that before they, they went up to Cheltenham or over to Cheltenham. Uh, and they were doing uh, basically what, what the what happens with Gareth scores, um, and it meant that Gareth Ing- uh, Gareth Ainsworth no uh, Gareth McCleary was running straight at me, which I can tell you he moves quickly. <laughs> Talking of moving quickly, sort of, and that the nice. <laughs> I see. I know you're going with this. Super tenuous. Yeah. yeah. Um, all sorts of uh, deals being done, perhaps uh, on transfer deadline day. You went with us on the show last week, but uh, give us a bit of an insight into into what you were doing. What would you like to know? Well, just sort of behind the scenes, what was it like? Was there, you can imagine people had, like, I guess, multiple phones ringing and managers doing deals and buy high, sell low, uh, all the way around. Uh, <laughs> and obviously, we, we now know afterwards that we were awaiting the arrival of uh, Nigel and um, and who else? There was someone else. Was Matt Butcher deadline day as well? No, he was the day before, wasn't he? He was revealed on the uh, on the Wednesday night game. Was. I mean, uh, everyone makes, and I, I think Sky. Mainly over the down to this, <laughs> they make it seem like it's really dramatic 
because you've got the countdown to a le- it's like oh it's five minutes left um but phil mentioned it in the interview with um matt bloomfield and pete Kuhig, which if you haven't seen yet you should check out because i don't think a manager and one of the, his directors have ever sat down with the director talking about his saxon future. Saxon, it was Saxon, well done, um, his future while he sat next to him. And it was a great insight. Um, but there is a lot of waiting around because while the players are doing medicals, you're sort of just sat there going, we'll just we'll wait here because we can't do anything because if he doesn't you know, pass it, then we've got a problem. So yeah, there was, a, there was lots of moments where there was a slower pace, but also moments where there was like fast pace, you know, we'll get this all done. Um, you know, Tom Holder, Pete Kuhig and Matt Bloomfield and the whole team, um, you know, really put in the effort um, to get players. And obviously it was all changing at certain points. So, yeah, the whole the whole backroom staff did an excellent job. And it was really interesting to to actually just watch it all happen and watch the cogs turn. Well done, everyone. I did some editing as well. That was basically my... Were there cogs turning as well? That's, that's quite yeah, old fashioned. It's, that it's quite, yeah, it's just a clock moving. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it was just really interesting to be there. No, absolutely. Uh, more from Luke throughout the show. Uh, more from me throughout the show. That's what makes the show really, doesn't it? Without, without any of that, they'll just be... Just silence. Just playing out clips yeah. of people. Uh, but in fact, more of that on the way shortly here at Wickham Sound. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Second part of this week's Wickham Wanderer show still to come in what's left of the hour. Uh, we'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield. We'll also catch up with Craig from Wickham Wanderers Women to uh, find out what uh, the latest goings-ons uh, there are. <laughs> Does that make sense? Kind of. Yeah. And also, we'll be giving you some details of the uh, Bristol Street Motors Trophy Ooh. semi-final. It's exciting, isn't it? It is exciting. It's very exciting. The last four of a cup competition. And uh, possibly the return of the notice board section as well. If we have time. Yes, yes. If we have time, yeah. Otherwise, it'll be more of a pin board. <laughs> Just throw some things at you. Uh, you had a, a good press session yesterday. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we, should we hear what Matt Bloomfield and Matt Cecil had to hear about one of your questions? Yes, absolutely. Okay. This, this was the reaction. Oh, that was fantastic. That was fantastic, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't see it coming. You got me, mate. You're very clever. So f- <laughs> find out. Um, I don't think you meant... Did he mention your name in that? Did he say Colin? Because if not, so. I'm just going to use it. I'm just going to take it as mine. Oh, I see. Let's have. Should we hang on? Let's have a listen. That was fantastic. That was fantastic, wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't it? I didn't see it coming. You got me, mate. You're very clever. No, no, anyone could do that. We can. Perfect. Amazing. Thank you very much. Have, have, that, have that as yours. Yeah. Uh, with thanks to the Wickham Wanderers <laughs> Ex Players Association, uh, very pleased to this week have caught up with Craig McHale Smith, who uh, not only uh, as a former striker who starred for both Wickham and Peterborough, who are the visitors to Adams Park this week, uh, but by some strange coincidence, I will also be <laughs> a guest in the Legends Lounge. And as you can imagine, he's very much looking forward to it. It's going to be lovely to come back. Um, I've, I mean, I've only been popped back maybe once or twice since I've kind of left. But it's soon, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And obviously, all my family are going to come as well. And obviously, there's a bit of, like, it's going to be an interesting day. Obviously, two teams that I've, <laughs> I've played for. So, you just have to be very, very neutral. I was going to say, do you, do you have sort of split? Because I guess if you've been at, at different clubs, it, you obviously you'll support them all. But when, when they're playing each other, it must be a bit tricky. Yeah, obviously I had, I had great times uh, at Peterborough and, and with them. So I have, have like real fond memories. So um, it's, it's kind of like, it's nice to have no allegiance to the club. So I'm just, I just going to come as a neutral and, and just enjoy the, the day. Um, and so enjoy my family coming back and, and enjoying being at Wickham. No, no, which is your favourite? No, that's a joke. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, I, I'm very, I was very lucky to play for both and have a successful time at both. Um, and obviously, it's, I, I know lots of people at both clubs still, so it's just, it's just been an enjoyable day for me and my family to to, to watch the game. You can't lose, really, can you? No, no. It, 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 I just, I'm just looking forward to to a good game. Obviously, I, I was at the Wickham uh, Peterborough game uh, at, at Peterborough, and it was a a fantastic uh, game there. Both teams performed really well and it was enjoyable. So hopefully it'll be exactly the same when, when we come on Saturday. You've picked a really good time, obviously, because, you know, Peter were doing so well, with uh, apart from the other night. But also, you know, Wickham seemed to be you know on the up and really coming out of this kind of slump, really, in, in results, certainly, if not performances. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's, both teams have been doing, doing pretty well. I think, I'd say, the game they both played Early on in the season was 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 a great game. It was, it was uh, contested by two fantastic teams. As you say Peterborough have been on a on a great run, and and Wickham have started to find their feet. So it will be uh, it will be very interesting to see how they both both cope with the occasion. Do you watch football quite well, or is it is it quite hard as a as someone who who's is not not that long ago and start playing? Um, I still watch it now and then. Um, I'm, I'm trying to kind of get around the grounds and go and see different games. 
um, and doing lots of like different things. So it it pays to watch football because kind of what I want to do in the future has has kind of relevance to football. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, and do you kind of keep an eye out, especially on you know players who, who are in your position, especially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I, what I look out for. Like, I, I I enjoy watching the whole game, but obviously I love watching strikers. Um, I love watching like what they're about. Like obviously when they're in form, when they're not in form. I love to kind of look at how I could help strikers with with what they're with uh, with kind of maybe getting that mo- that one percent out of them. It must be really nice as well with coming up on on Saturday and um, you know watching. Hopefully there'll be there'll be goals for you to to enjoy there as well. But it must bring back some great memories of, of goals that you'd have scored at that ground too. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I scored some some great goals there, and it was I had some fantastic fantastic nights. So I'm really kind of I, I'd say I've, I've kept in contact with a few people. I still speak to to Matt Bloomfield. I, I went in the other day and saw him. So it'd be just nice to see, to go back, see some old faces, and and, and say hopefully enjoy a, a game full of goals and excitement. And just to give it extra pride in a way, because you know you were part of that team that, that helped win you know automatic promotion, and, and to see the team you know still in League One and obviously slightly higher as well, comparatively recently as well. Yeah, no, it's, it's been it's been a great journey to to, to watch the club and have been involved in the club. Obviously, when we came in, it was it was the club was kind of in a tough position, and and to see kind of the progression that it's had over the years, obviously to be in a championship and then kind of drop down into to League One and be a consistently performing well in League One, it's, it's great to see. Because football's strange, isn't it? You think, oh, we're going through this period where things aren't very good and then you think, oh, hello, uh, everything's excellent again now and then things are going really well and you think, well, what was so bad before? Yeah, it, it's, just, it's, it's, it's very, it is a very strange game. It, it comes in waves, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's a, you go through a bad time and then all of a sudden you put a team together and you go through some good times. So, it's always kind of trying to be level-headed in football because it changes so fast. Isn't it? There's never a point when it's just like doom and gloom, and there's never a point when it's just all amazing. It's like you just have to flow with with what happens and how it goes, especially as a supporter. Did you find that as a striker as well? Because there must have been great pressure on you to obviously get goals. I, I, owing to the fact that I think that's probably on your job description. That's probably probably quite near the top. But I, there must be periods where you thought, "Well, I'm not scoring. How come I'm not?" Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think you you, you always have that as a striker. There's, there's points when you're, 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 everything you hit is going in and it's like, oh, God, like, this is amazing and I hope it's never stopped. And then all of a sudden you hit a patch where you may not score in one or two games and then that's when like you, you may, maybe you need someone around you who's got experience and who's got a bit of know-how to help you kind of get through those little periods uh, like, and get out the other side quicker. I was going to say that must be great that you noticed towards the end of your time at Wickham as well to be able to offer, you know, help and guidance to, to younger players coming through as well after what you've been through. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like that, that's, that's kind of part of the, the stuff that I do do now. I've, I've been doing a bit of mentoring um, with some players and I'm doing some uh, doing striker coaching. So that's kind of like the where I want to want to be, where I want to get into, helping kind of maybe younger players uh, get like get better and hone their skills, and also I want to work with kind of the pros like from where I've been because I feel like I have a real good knowledge of the game um, and that's kind of something I want to want to give back and, and say help help the pros kind of find that one percent to, to get better you must be especially pleased for, for Matt as well to be to be manager as a, as a former teammate as well yeah yeah it's lovely you knew he was going to be destined for management like as, as a player as a captain as, as a person you knew that's kind of like the, the, the way he'd go and obviously he's Taking taking it to it really well. I say I, I popped in and saw him the other day because I wanted to see the training session and and just pick his brain about the striker coaching and whether that was something that he'd be interested in. But he's he's taking in his stride. I didn't I didn't realise and maybe he didn't realise kind of how chaotic it is because when I was in with him it was just there was just so so many different things that were that were happening. And as a player you never get to see that side of a manager. You only ever see like then turn up and deliver a session so it was it was very eye-opening to, to be on the other side with him and really nice for you now as well that you can concentrate on sort of what's to come because I, I know when we last spoke to you you had had a bit of an unfortunate experience with with a lot of water yeah yeah i've only just got that resolved that's taken three years to get sorted so that that was a real uh, kind of uh, it was hard to deal with mentally and i think that put a kind of what what, what life was going to be like on a bit of a back burner but now that's kind of sorted I'm really kind of pushing forward now with with this, this striker coaching. I'm going to, I'm starting getting in club in contact with clubs and 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 players, and and hopefully I can can start getting people on board and and utilising my past experiences. 
That must be so exciting as well, especially working with youngsters and, and seeing them develop and showing them, you know, kind of yeah, great technique and things like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different it's, and it's a little bit difficult because I, like, I'm, I'm having to kind of break it down. So I'm having to relearn everything myself, really, of like how the, how the movement is initiated and obviously how it goes and, and like how to, to get to the, the, the end product of the goal. So it's, 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 it's been good for me. It's been an eye opener to learn how to do that. Um, on that side so and, and say working with pros and it's more about the, the finer detail so it's it's exciting as I said I'm, I'm starting to put it out there I'm, I'm working with young younger players now and obviously I want to try and get get some some professionals on board and, and, and hopefully like um, help them Have you coped well if that's the right expression with, with not playing obviously it sounds like you've had other distractions to, to kind of deal with as well but has it, has it been quite a, a straightforward process to stop? Um, not really, not really. Like, I've I found it more a bit more difficult. Um, I think I've been in it for so long, like, and it was just kind of like it it become me, it become my persona, it become my identity. And I think you, you have so much structure and you have so much kind of uh, organisation that's done for you. It's 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 a given. And then when you come out, all of that structure, all of that kind of support network, it kind of disappears. And then you have to learn to kind of stand on your own two feet. Um, and find your way. So it's, it has been a little bit difficult, and I have felt a little bit lost a few times. But I feel like with the striker stuff, I'm starting to, to find my feet, starting to find my niche, and I, I just need to be a bit more proactive with like social media and, and getting people to see what I'm actually doing, and then and then hopefully it will take off from there. And weekends must be very different for you as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's more time now with the kids, which is great because they kind of had to put up with me uh, travelling everywhere and coming to games um, so we, I try and get to, to games here and there but I want to I spend time with my kids trying to uh, do the, the kind of the, um, activities that they enjoy and your wife must be so pleased to see more of you as well no no she wants me out of the house so <laughs> uh, she, she's had enough of, uh, enough of me already there's been enough time together so she wants me to get get out and get, uh, get, get doing stuff so then she's got her time again so yeah no, she's you're trying to kick me out. <laughs> I'm sure many people listening can can, can relate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just going back to Saturday, it would be really you know, exciting for you, I guess, to kind of be able to reflect on on your time at both clubs and and enjoy, you know, to say what what they're doing currently. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's going to be a wonderful day. You say I was very lucky to play for for both teams and and have success at both teams. Um, and so there's wonderful people uh, at both clubs still. So it'd be it'd just be an enjoyable day. So it'd be nice to bring my family back. I think, I think my, my two oldest were quite young when I was at Wickham, so it'd be nice for them to go back and and see it and and then experience the game. I know when we spoke to you before, we've asked, but are there kind of particular games or particular goals or occasions that that really stand out from your time at the club? Um, I think there's quite a few games that we were kind of we, in the season we got promoted from League Two was I think was like uh, the, the comeback game. So I think Carlisle at home. Uh, I think there was like crew away. Uh, I think then we went in, there was a game in League One when we beat Scunthorpe uh, when we were down to ten men, two um, one. So there, there has been some wonderful times uh, throughout my time at that club. And I'm sure it's the same with other other teams you've been to as well. But the the camaraderie and the you know the dressing room atmosphere and the, the kind of bond and the experience that you will go through it felt so special. You know, with that particular group as well. Oh yeah, definitely. I think when when I came in. We were we were written off. We were we were too old. We were too inexper- like we had the inexperienced younger players. Um, everyone just kind of wrote us off. I think expected us to get relegated, and then to to achieve what the club did in that three year period was testament to to the, the, the coaching staff. Was testament to all the players there that that believed in in the in the, the team and believed that they could achieve something special. And a great advert for kind of hard work and, and that brilliant ethic that that what you can achieve in, in sort of sport, obviously, and in football and at any level. A hundred percent. I think it, it showed that when, when you set a bar um, and you, and you don't let people drop below it, um, it, it great. And we all believe in a, in a kind of unified goal, then it, anything can happen. It's such a great message, isn't it? Because I know as fans, you can get very like kind of bogged down, can't you? In like the way things are now, but you know, it's, it all seems so cyclical, doesn't it? And it's all going to you know kind of turn around, and there'll be there'll be good times just around the corner. Yeah, it's it's difficult. It is very difficult as a fan, and football moves so fast, and it's kind of like, and it's the same as a player. You kind of you don't you don't appreciate what you've done in that moment in time. You don't appreciate how far you've travelled 
um, and what you've achieved. It's, it's, it's always on to the next season and on to the next season. And, and I think that's where sometimes fans lose sight of the, the journey that, that Wickham have been on over the, the last kind of three, five, six, seven years. Is, has been a, a monumental one. And sometimes there are down times. And I think you just got to take that with a pinch of salt. You just, it's a, you just got to take that as kind of a bit of breathing space. And then, and then the club will go again. I know you're quite looking forward to this next sort of phase in your career and your life as well, using the experience that you have had in, in this coaching capacity. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I, I'm, I'm excited. It was, it was tough to say when I came out because all I've ever known is football and, and it's kind of like, what do you put, replace it with? And now I've spent more time doing the striker stuff. It's hopefully, as I said, I can put some more together and start kind of working with pros and semi-pros and keep working with the young kids and, and, and hopefully kind of help guide them to, to reach their potential. I hope you'll have, you'll have lots of examples of, of goals on Saturday to, to use in your coaching as well. Well, yeah, hopefully, hopefully there, there, it'll be a, a real good, a real good, entertaining game. That's, that's all I'm hoping for. Well, it's been a real pleasure to speak to you and enjoy your day on Saturday. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Brilliant catching up with Craig Michael Smith, and uh, he'll be, as you say, at the Legends Lounge on Saturday. He will. Looking forward to it. I would imagine uh, tickets are still available for the Legends Lounge as well. So if you've listened to that and gone, oh, I'd like some food, some uh, drink, some football, and Craig Michael Smith and Phil, uh, then uh, definitely go and go and find some more details on the Wicked Wanderers website. What an incredible combination. It's a good combination, isn't it? I also hear former guest Mark West uh, will be appearing as well. He is at the Oxford game? Question mark? I think it's very high yeah it was quite high no sorry. I think that is correct thank you good I'm glad I got that right and Andy Rammel may be well putting in a performance as well uh, possibly I don't know about him uh, possibly Barnsley I believe ok thank you very much ha- um, asterisk TBC nice look at us they're excellent to have had these players on and then you know um, can be at the ground as well yeah and uh, it's always really nice especially with p- uh, people like um, Craig and I'm sure we'll see it on Saturday is that the um, the, the friendship that they have still with um, Matt Bloomfield uh, or blooms as they were to him, uh, gaffer to everybody else, and yeah, it's always very nice, and it's always it's always nice for them to to see how the club has gone from where they where they were and to where it is now. And the affinity with the club as well. I know, you know, like certain people have perhaps gone back to school after they've left, or gone back to other. Yeah, you know, I don't think many people go back to other workplaces when they've left, but it's fantastic. Gone that... to painting, <laughs> <laughs> or, or go to hotels when they've been yeah. before, or something. That's got a bit weird, but it's really nice that you know they hold the club in such high high esteem and want to come back. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we always talk about it's like a big family uh, and it really is. And it doesn't matter if you're a player now or 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago plus, you know, you're, you're always part of the, the family. Some family uh, gatherings not quite so successful, but but that's another another. <laughs> we ain't got time for those. Another story entirely. No. Uh, in a notice board section, some some uh, ticket detail and some what well, date detail confirmation about the Bristol Street Motors semi final. Which one we this week. game from Wembley. It's very exciting, isn't it? Uh, semi final of the Bristol Street Motors Trophy, which I called the Bristol Rovers Motors Trophy last week. <laughs> did Whoops. you? I did. Yeah. Luckily, I heard it before it went out. Uh, Bradford City is the host, and who we're playing. It's on Wednesday, the twenty first of February. Uh, Kick off. Thanks, Sky. Is at eight o'clock in the evening uh, tickets for season ticket holders is open uh, right now uh, they, the rest the rest of us uh, can get tickets on uh, the 10th of February which is Saturday at 12 o'clock I would imagine you'll be able to buy them um, in reception or as well on Saturday um, but yeah very exciting uh, and hopefully not confirmed yet but the club are doing everything they can uh, to open Adams Park to enable fans uh, who can't travel north at 8 o'clock in the evening uh, to watch it together at Adams Park as well so keep an eye out for more details on that but it's exciting absolutely Yes, the kickoff time uh, throughout the competition has been seven o'clock and now now eight o'clock. <laughs> Thanks, Guy. And we could be facing Peterborough again. Yes. Yeah. What a small world. I know. Funny how things sort of come. We've had Bradford here. already this year. Yes. Yeah. Also, it is a small world. It is In small fact, because yeah. they're teams that we've been playing recently or have coming up recently. Yeah, because of Blackpool as well. Yeah. 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 Look at that. Oh. <clears throat> yes, do check out the Wicked Wonders website uh, for more details as well. Final part of the Wicked Wonders show on the way. Online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Final part of this week's Wickham Wonders show still to come. We'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield uh, in a chat which was recorded yesterday. Um, it's important to point that out because there's at least one reference which, which won't make sense otherwise. <laughs> it's very confusing when press day is on Wednesday because I now feel like today's Friday. Yes. It's very confusing. It varies, obviously, depending on whether there's a Tuesday night game. Yeah, it does, and it just confuses everybody. But it's good because it gives us more time to prepare this show and yes. pre-match drills. So. Can you tell this show is more prepared this week? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I love the idea that, yeah, it may, it may, it may seem more prepared. It I might know. do. I mean, if it does, send us an email, yeah. twws at wickhamsound.org.uk. If it doesn't, don't. No. 
<laughs> Only say nice things. <laughs> yeah, don't contact us with negative feedback. <laughs> don't want that. Nobody wants that. Uh, also on the show, we regularly feature Wickham Wanderers women and... They're down to their final five games of the season. I know. It's come around quickly. Uh, their next game is uh, in the quarterfinal of the uh, quarterfinal fixture of, of, the league s- of the League Cup. It didn't say, but thank you. Uh, Bournemouth Sports is who they're playing. Yes. After that, in the league, uh, Ascot United on the 25th of Feb, uh, Winchester City Flyers on the 3rd of March, uh, and then they've got three games in March after that. So not many home games, you were saying, either. They've got two. So Ascot and Winchester are the last home games in the league, at least. So if you do fancy going along and backing the chair girls at Burnham, uh, which I think is a catchy slogan they have. I like, they should use that. Yeah. Okay, Craig, use that one. <laughs> then, um, uh, then you've not got many occasions left to do it. Uh, as Luke mentioned, Bournemouth Sports, they're playing in the Cup this coming Sunday. Mm-hmm. Coincidentally, uh, the same team that they faced in the league last Sunday. Uh, you mentioned, Craig. Uh, here he is. Tell us more. This Sunday, Bournemouth Sports away. It's a massive game. I mean, we just played them a couple of days ago on Sunday and uh, and beat them two one in a in a fantastic performance. So, you know, which I'm sure we'll get to shortly. But yeah, you know, to to progress in this League Cup is is something that not only that the gaffer wants, but you know, the girls really want, and the hunger and the drive at the moment is is there. And it's um it's mirroring last season a little bit. We played Bournemouth Sports away at the at the quarter final stage this time last year in February. So it's got a lot, and we won that one one nil. So <laughs> there's a lot of positive similarities to this to this run and um hopefully if we do beat them Sunday, if we can and if we can progress we can make it a step further than we did last year. Is it really positive to play these teams so closely together? Because they had the same with Eastley very recently as well. Yeah, it's quite um it's not massively uncommon. We played Bournemouth twice last February, um, but that had I think we had a game or two in the middle. Um, again, that the, the League Cup game that I talked about and in the league, both away. So it's actually the fourth time we've gone to Bournemouth in 12 months. But, you know, it has its pros and cons. I mean, you can learn a lot about a team, you know, by by playing them one week and then, you know, but they all obviously in turn learn a lot about yourselves as well. So you've got, you know, you can't necessarily go and do exactly the same thing the following week. And if you do, it has to be absolutely pristine. Like take Eastley, for example. You know, we, we were on, very unfortunate to, to lose that, that fi- first fixture away, 2-1. And we were probably, you know, the, the more dominant team, particularly in the second half. And, and then in the home game, you know, it was, a, it was another draw, but we won on penalties. You know, we went all the way. And to be honest, we finished that game again very strongly. So, you know, we did progress and we did improve over those two games. Um, against Eastley and um, you know Bournemouth's the same Bournemouth again undefeated before we played them uh, on Sunday Colin so you know the the performance was probably I'd say the best performance I've seen since since being with the girls in the last sort of 18 months two years that second half against Bournemouth on Sunday was just absolutely top tier and you know to think we had a couple of players get injured before the game um, that would have started you know we had we had one or two even away as well so you know, to to dig in that performance and, you know, be, you know we went, went one nil down in two minutes, you know, and I think Bournemouth probably thought, well, here we go again. This is, you know, we beat them three nil in the, in the reverse fixture in the league. Like, you know, we're one nil up in two minutes. Here we go. Or three one, sorry, apologies, three one away. You know, Bournemouth are probably thinking that's that, but, you know, they massively underestimated us and, um, and we came back stronger. And great to see, I'm sure fans would have seen the uh, interviews on on social media that you did with Emma and and with Julia as well. Um, Fantastic that it means so much to the players, obviously, and whether they're experienced or whether they're new, you know, perhaps getting their first goals for the club, you know, it all means so much. I mean, Emma Kern is someone that's been with Wickham for quite some time now. And um, she's had a bit of a a difficult season. You know, she's been sort of moved around in a few different positions, left wing, left back, wing back, centre mid. And it's it, it's handy to have a player like her because it means that you know if there is a, if there is an issue or a problem she can fit in and she was somebody that that jumped in um, last minute because of the injury to Maddie Armstrong before the game. I mean, and a testament to her to get player of the match. She played fantastically well, and you know it, again moving on to, to Julia as well. Julia scored her first ever goal for for Wickham since since signing from Wimbledon um, last summer. Again, she's someone that's had a difficult time. She's even dropped into the twenty threes a couple of weeks ago. Last Sunday, she wasn't in the squad. And this week she comes in and, and puts in a fantastic performance. And, you know, if you've not seen her goal, please go and check out our socials because it's all on there. It's a, it's a fantastic goal that she scored. And she's, you know, the gaffer's seen that in her like when he brought her in from Wimbledon. And, you know, she's, she's probably to her own admission not kind of showing that. And, you know, this past week she's trained well. 
and uh well yeah sunday she really she really showed up and and uh it'll be hard not to pick her next sunday i'm sure and we heard your chat on the show last week with danny who's a, a new coach and i'm sure a fantastic addition to the setup i mean this it's like anything carl will go and he will recruit players and you know he'll make sure they're the right fit for what he needs and positions of what he needs and that's the same with coaching you know he's brought in danny whose full-time job is a coach, does a lot of coaching with QPR and QPR's development squads and they're, they're sort of unders and they're younger, younger players. And he's, he used to work in women's football and he's decided to come back. And, you know, since he's come in, a number of the girls and, you know, both both Emma and uh, and Julia spoke highly of Danny in my interviews with them after the game on Sunday. And, you know, the, the performance he's put in and, you know, the, the, the way that he's, he's turned the girls you know, push them on a bit. I think Kearney said it well. Like they've they've pushed them on another level. And you know, I, I came into the, the the team in and around the team a few a couple of years ago. And so I and Cole was Cole then he just come in as well. But I, you know, I just see that 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 constant level. So for me to see someone else come in just from like sort of on the on the outskirts of the team, see Danny come in. I've seen firsthand now how these girls have upped and how they've just improved in two weeks, three weeks, like it's only a short amount of time and they've already all improved like quite a bit. So the longer he spends with us, the, the more these girls are going to improve, not only as individuals, but as a team. And it's an exciting time to be a Wicker Wanderers women fan. Trust me. No, absolutely. It feels like there's a real wave of, of interest, definitely, because you know, you've got the men's team involved in a, in a cup semi-final and the women are involved in a, a league quarter final, league cup quarter final as well. Imagine at the end of the season, we can both take a trophy out onto that Adams Park pitch together. Do you know what I mean? That was, I mean, I'm trying to, trying to, you know, make a make an image in my head there. That uh, that sounds pretty good to me if we can all make it happen. As you say, it really feels like an exciting time for for the women's team, and, and great that you know supporters are getting behind them and, and really kind of you know cheering them on, literally. Yeah, the you know not only have we had a um, an in, a, a more of an interest of support from fans and sort of local people coming, but we've had you know massive interest from some sort of mascot packages that we put on now and these mascots they stay they watch the games you know they get a, a training session before the game they get a, a penalty shoot at half time and they make so much noise Colin in the game you know maybe there's like 10 15 of them you know and they all come they all bring their parents and the parents make a lot of noise and these kids make a lot of noise and what's only like 100 or so people can honestly sometimes sound like a like a like four or five hundred at times and trust me it really spares the girls on so the more people we have down there the more confidence it that that, that that our players get and the more that they that they're, they're going to try and the more effort and the results are just going to come from that and i know as well we've spoken in the past about how it's really nice where the, the the players get involved in off the field activities as well and the green weekend has just passed and it was really nice to see you know bobby taking part in that as well with her recipe yeah, Bobby's recipe that made it in. I think it was a curry, wasn't it? I think. Mm. Um, so, I mean, um, mm. yeah, exactly. Very, very nice. He doesn't like a good curry, so. But yeah, it was great for 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 us to have representation in there as well, as well as the, the men with David Wheeler. He he's um his recipe is as well in the in the book. You know, to have to have representation that from not only you know the club but from the women's side of it as well. You know, that's fantastic for us and fantastic for Bobby and you know as our captain as well and fantastic for us all moving forward great to hear from craig do keep an eye on the uh, wickham wanderers women socials as i believe they say and uh, also the website too and uh, as we mentioned a little earlier on they're down to their final five games wish them all the best for their league cup contest against bournemouth sports on sunday as well you might have heard earlier on in the week as well uh, the club sharing the uh, devastating news the tragic death of 17 year old season ticket holder adam anchors uh, he was taken out last week whilst playing for Wickham Wanderers Foundation's under-19s team, uh, which are in partnership with Henley College. He passed away in hospital on Monday. Adam was a student at the college, an aspiring footballer and an avid supporter of the Chairboys as well. He uh, attended each home game on the terrace with his dad, his brother and his sister. And we started the uh, press session with the manager yesterday uh, to uh, pay tribute and share the club's condolences uh, from Matt Bloomfield. Absolutely, we were... All devastated to hear when we were told the news. Um, you know, to lose someone who means so much to the club, who the club meant so much to um, at such a young age is, um, yeah, obviously devastating. We, you know, our condolences go to to the family because, you know, the loss they must be suffering right now uh, must be huge. So we're really, really thinking of them at, at this moment, mate. 
And just goes to show how important things are in perspective and also how, how well the club kind of comes together and can support, you know, someone who's not just a fan, a season tick holder, but, you know, a player for their foundation as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, you know, it puts things into perspective. Um, you know, family and, and life is, is much greater than, than football. But, um, you know, he spent his life doing something that he loved, playing football for the foundation, supporting his team. Um, and if that can give the family a, a crumb of comfort in such a... Um, horrible moment then then we hope that they can um, because you know this football club means a, you know, a great deal to a lot of people um, so if we can all come together and try and find some strength together in these kind of moments then then I hope that that can give them a real small crumb of comfort in what must be a, a real terrible time for them. A really nice opportunity on, on Saturday for, for as many people to come and you know obviously back the club but also show their appreciation as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we've got two home games the next two Saturdays and I hope that, you know, his teammates, his family, his friends can, can join us at some point um, because, you know, the, the football club does give an opportunity for, you know, a football family to come together and uh, and mourn when it's necessary and, and get together when it's necessary and, and get strength from each other. So um, I really hope that they can find a little bit of strength amongst like-minded people and I hope as a football club that we can make sure we conduct ourselves in the right way because these are really really important uh, moments for their family and just moving on to uh, on the pitch matters does it feel like you know a real it feels in a way doesn't it a bit like you know sort of coming through a harsh winter and, and, and signs of spring I guess for yourself as well you know things feel like they're improving especially with you know the, the, the dealings that you've done in the in the transfer window and obviously you've not been well yourself and now feeling better and you know you've got those two wins both in the cup and in the league it must have been great to to be on the training ground this week and, and working with some new players but also you know moving forward with what you've been doing yeah absolutely I think you summed it up really nicely Colin I think that you know, we've had some testing moments and I'm sure that, you know, over the next 11 weeks, there'll be some more ahead because that's the game, it's the sport and you have to ride those moments when they come along. But we're certainly full of optimism for for the future. We're optimi- optimism, full of optimism for the spring ahead of us. Um, you know, the boys are in a good spot. We've been going through all the data, we've been going through our performances recently. We're in a good spot. We're really pleased with some of the football we're playing. Um, we obviously want to improve. We still want to get better and uh, there's loads for us to get better at. But we're pleased with the January signings we've made. We're pleased with the strength of the squad and, and we're just eager to get on with these games. It does feel like there have been, you know, so many positives in, in what appears to, to some, I think, to got quite a sort of bleak time. It was really interesting hearing that chat that, that you and Pete did with Phil that, you know, just in those in these last eight games, only one defeat and many of the games have been very close as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, people... Uh, know that I do look into the data. We look, we've looked at the data again yesterday. We've done a performance review of where we're at in terms of the season and um, the top three KPIs that indicate um, where you'll finish in the table. We're fifth, fifth and, and seventh. So we know that over the course of the season um, that our performance levels have been to a level that we we could have picked up more results. We're really pleased with the work that's some of the works that, that's been done, we know we've got to improve in, in loads of areas. No, there's no um, getting away from that. But, you know, there's loads of optimistic signs. We've just got to make sure that we we translate those into results because that's the thing that we get judged on. And that's the thing that the perception over our season is on the results. So it's up to us to make sure that, um, you know, those results go in our favour. But we're really pleased with, with where we're at right now. We've got three really good games to look forward to next week, starting with Peterborough on Saturday. And, and we want to start and uh, we want to be on the front foot, mate. We want to attack. We want to make sure that we're showing ourselves in our best light because we've got huge belief inside this building and we have to we have to keep going out and proving it. And fans would have noticed that, that Pete has a new title of sporting director. Is that something that, that means any sort of change in terms of your, your relationship? Does that benefit you in any way or is that just something a bit different for him? No, I think Pete's always um, sort of acted in that role anyway. I think that you know, Pete's a, a massive person within this football club in terms of his dealings behind the scenes, in terms of the way he helps um, translate from, um, you know, across the pond with with Rob travelling backwards and forwards and Pete travelling backwards and forwards and, and making sure he's always here to support and, and offer that experience of the time that he's been over and across. So, no, no, I, I, I don't... Um, Think that anything's changed in that regard. He was he was huge for for me last week in terms of helping to um, execute the transfer window, and and I thank him for his support. He's you can always hear Pete. You can always know when he's around. He's a massive character and a massive um, energy and influence for us. So it's great to have him here when we do. Another fantastic positive. Uh, I noticed that the football league paper had uh, Jack Grimmer amongst uh, their team of the week, and, and I was speaking to a, a fan this week. 
a proper one, um, who was saying that, you know, since you've been in charge, how they noticed how, you know, Jack's game's really developed and how he's come on as a player. And obviously he's, he's been captain quite a few times as well. That must be so pleasing uh, for you. Yeah, absolutely. Because Jack's someone who we think extremely highly of, you know, we think when you're building a, a team and a, and a club and a squad, you need, um, you know, you need an amount of leaders within it. And Jack's certainly one of those. He conducts himself extremely well every single day of the week, whether he's in the team, out of the team. You know, he's one of those guys that, Come match day, you wouldn't know whether he's starting or not starting the way he conducts himself and the way he supports the group. And that's the thing that I have um, hold him in such high high regard for because he's so consistent with his behaviour and his training. Um, you know, he's a real reliable, solid character on and off the pitch and he's been a big player for us recently. You know, slotted in at centre-back last week, got his goal, you know, and I think that he's a massive player for us. So I'm really pleased with the work he's doing and uh, and there's plenty more that are following suit as well. Well, we mentioned uh, Saturday, a great opportunity for people to come and show their support. It should be a great game as well with, with Peterborough visiting, who are obviously in great form and, and they've got a, you know, a young, exciting team who are doing really well and a great opportunity to uh, test your side as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, Peterborough are a very, very good team, um, you know, both on the eye and also with the data as well. We know that they've got some real good young players, um, loads of pace about them, loads of 1v1 brilliance, loads of trickery and, and creativity. So we know that... We're going to have to be defensively very, very sound. We're going to have to work really hard on our shape and in transitional moments. But we also believe in the way that we've been playing recently, the way we've been able to get our wide players in the game and, and create chances for, for Voxie and Dalo arriving in the box. We believe that we've added some some goals to our squad in January and, and we're looking forward to, to taking, taking them on and having a real good game with them because we believe in what we're doing and we're looking forward to the game, mate. And also, it's it's uh, I noticed on the on the table, not far away from that that forty points now, which I know is in the Premier League is sort of seen some sort of magical survival target. But I guess that's that's quite different in League One due to the. That, is that something you look at, sort of a points tally, and to see kind of where you are at certain stages of the season? Yeah, I think you're always kind of aware of you know the roundabout number that it takes for automatic promotion, um, playoff pro, you know playoff numbers and you know, relegation. There's always usually around the same sort of figures each season, so you know where you're at, you know where you want to get to, but equally. Um, you know, in the in the interim period, you have to concentrate on ev- every individual result and try and take a bigger scope over it every now and again. So we know where we're at, mate. We know what work we've got to do. We know where we want to get to. I want to finish the season really, really strongly. There's only 11 weeks, but there's, you know, 17 league games and, and one cup game, which we hope to turn into two. So there's loads of football to go around with the squad. And, you know, whatever team we put out each game, we have to make sure we're ready. Um, we believe we can pick up some real good results between now and the end of the season. And we have to we have to prove that. And 40, of course, quite a significant milestone, not just for, for football teams uh, either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I think I know what you're getting at, mate. It's a big day tomorrow. I've got birthday, a bit of a milestone to look forward to. So a few more grey hairs coming through, but um, really looking forward to spending the day at home with my, my wife and my girls. I wish you a very happy birthday for that. I had to suggest that, that that whole points question was building up to that bit, but it was a very happy birthday. I'm sorry that I can't be there to, to bring you brownies myself. You're very kind. Thank you, Colin. Take care, mate. You too. Real pleasure. Thanks for your time. Cheers, mate. Great chatting to you, Matt. But should we explain the brownies reference as well? Because people might not have heard that before. Oh, yeah, you brought brownies in. I did, because there was uh, one occasion when he started, he was presented with, was it? Was that brownies That was well? brownies yes. as well, yeah. So and then he the, the was presented with something else, wasn't it? A yeah. team sheet. And then it was just us. <laughs> And then, and we felt to keep it going, we should present him with brownies as well. So it was, it was funny if you had to be there as well. But yes, uh, shortly after that uh, chat, uh, Matt Cecil, who uh, is the head of media at the club, you might well be aware, uh, gave this re- response. Oh, that was fantastic. That was fantastic, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't see it coming. You got me, mate. You're very clever. Well done. It was very good. Everyone in the room was like, "That's, that's very nice. impressive." Planned it. Well, I thought it's a bit, bit of a little handbrake turn to go. Oh, there's a game. It's your birthday. birthday. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, today, uh, Matt Bloomfield, 40. Uh, we I'm sure he's out. listening. Happy birthday. Probably. Do we, do we give him the... Does he want the bagpipes? <laughs> no? Yes, that's a, a traditional birthday thing now, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not playing them again. No, Sorry, no. Jack. That, that was a Jack Grimmer reference. Well, yeah. if you missed that the week. Uh, some news just in as well. Uh, that we could soon be seeing sin bins in the uh, professional football game. Uh, the sports law-making body IFAB is publishing details of the new trials tomorrow. Uh, blue cards could be issued to players who have to leave the field for 10 minutes for dissent or cynical fouls. Ooh, not those cynical ones. Uh, as part of these new proposals. Similar trials have already taken place in the amateur and youth game uh, in England and Wales. Yeah, look, if it means that Josh Gowan doesn't get a lot of yellow cards, 
I'm in for it. Blue cards, that's what it is. Why blue? Don't know, they'll be like... Red, yellow, and I, they went blue. Why about orange? Well, there'll be shades of blue as well, like navy <laughs> and sky. <laughs> it should have been orange, because it's tra- traffic lights. At Wickham Home Games, they'll have different... <laughs> yeah, it's quarters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, That'd nice. be ideal. Uh, thanks so much for listening this week. Hope you've enjoyed the show. I think it was better than last week, actually. I did, I liked it, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it'll be available on a podcast probably from tomorrow. Yeah. Come on, you blues. Up the week. Do people still say that? No, I don't know.